Welcome all my narrators, what's up? This You are now listening to the Narrative Podcast. This is a live edition of the Narrative Podcast. Welcome all my narrators. Welcome anyone new that may be tuning in right now. Um, so first of all, let me um, just, uh, you know, give a, a brief rundown of my podcast and uh, what I do here on my platform for... Um, any newbies that may have uh, just stumbled on to my uh, podcast just recently or are just now uh, listening to me right now. So first and foremost, thank you for uh, listening. Thank you for tuning in. And if you have uh, never heard of my podcast and you just um, stumbled across me randomly on a random scroll, just want to tell you it's not random. You're supposed to be here. Yeah. It's your destiny to be here with me, Halsey Allen, on the Narrative Podcast. All right, so the title, the Narrative Podcast. Um, first of all, I believe that um, the media weaves a false narrative about our people, about original people and original culture. So I wanted to create a platform where I destroy, um, you know, the false uh, narrative about our people and our culture, um, destroy the negative stereotypes and stigmas that um, the media perpetuates about original people and the uh, original culture. As a matter of fact, my tagline is for this podcast, the narrative podcast, changing the narrative one episode at a time by destroying negative stereotypes about original people and original culture. Um, I used, I'll used i tell you what it used to be in a second, still kind of unpacking. So um, basically what I do here on this platform, uh, I, highlight our, I highlight and showcase our successes. I play up all our accomplishments and um, do everything possible to put us in a positive light. Um, I don't drag other people, other, uh, you know, people, I don't do the rumor mill gossip. Uh, I do, uh, address current issues, things that involve us, um, and concern us. So my overall takeaway that I want my listeners to get from, uh, my podcast experience is, um, to share positive content online. That's why I call my listeners, my narrators. It's my personal belief that we all have the power to change the narrative by the, uh, you know, types of content we post online because the powers that be, they monitor our content and they just basically, you know, see what comes through the, uh, you know, what check out your uh, Internet settings, um, your cookies and, you, you know, just go through your browser history, see what you're looking at. Um, and uh, develop their uh, statistics based on that. And so, you know, they basically will create content around that. So they'll bombard us with gang culture, drug culture, um, thought culture, um, just all these um, negative stereotypes about us, all these negative nuances within our culture, and they take and weaponize it against us. Just constantly bombarding with that negativity um, weans heavily upon our psyche. And their ultimate goal is to, you know, cause us to view ourselves the way they view us, which is, you know, ignorant savages and lazy and undereducated. So 
I wanted to, you know, build a platform where I'm showing, you know, that we are, you know, the original man, we are uh, an original woman, that we are educated, um, that we are a dutiful people, that we take care of ourselves, that we uh, can provide for ourselves, um, you know, that we know how to build, that we teach, you know, that you just basically, I just play up our true nature on this podcast. Um, and that's what the narrative podcast experience is all about in a nutshell. Now, going back to the original man and woman thing, um, I recently had an epiphany about the word black. And I believe, you know, it has a negative connotation surrounding it. You can go in a dictionary, any dictionary, the Mediterranean, the Webster, whatever dictionary, um, and look at the word black. And you will see a whole lot of negative um, connotation surrounding the word black. I believe in the power of my words on my platform. So when you look at black in the dictionary or at the source, it's basically like um, black, dirty, dismal, um, gloomy, uh, you know, all things negative are associated with the word black. When you think black, um, deaf, you know, that we're all black at funerals. Um, in the animal kingdom, black, you know, crows, they symbolize death. And sure enough, you know, cut close, cut through that parallel today. And you see our people here in America and abroad pretty much getting primed just to die. So, you know, on my platform, I've tried to speak life. That's why I refer to us as original people, because it cannot be refuted. It's a scientifically proven fact that we were the original man and the original woman. We invented pretty much everything in the world. Um, definitely here in America, there would be no America had it been not for us, us and our uh, contributions to America. We won the first um, two pivotal wars that, uh, you know, shaped America. You know, first it was the uh, colonial war, then it was a civil war. Without any of those, you know, America would not be the America that it is today. No, none, all these other immigrants wouldn't have a place to immigrate to had it not been for us, the original man and the original woman. Uh, whether, you know, whether it's, um, you know, we came, some of us came here through the slave trade and, you know, the majority of us was already here indigenously in the Americas. But um, anyway, that's where, you know, I'm getting the original man and the original woman. It's basically just me speaking truth to power when I say that on my platform, because it is true. It's a proven fact. And it is empowering to know that you are the first. Not superior, just first. Okay, so now that I got all that out the way, all the formalities out the way, um, what I do on my live broadcast, um, new listeners, is basically I share um, positive frame of references that I uh, culminate in the few days. I just go live to tap in and um, share positive news, positive articles about our people excelling and um, contributing to society. So, you know, I try to, you know, share stories about uh, redemption. Um, share stories about leadership, community involvement, um, entrepreneurialism, activism, um, you know, our children excelling scholastically, um, just basically anything positive is what I share on my platform. Um, like I said, I don't really do negativity. I do address certain issues. You know, I call certain things out. When a uh, brother or sister is, you know, um, behaving in a manner that reflects poorly upon all of us, I will say something about that in that scenario. 
But um, when I do deliver the, uh, you know, recent news or um, any hot button issues involving us, I'm just unpacking it from the uh, perspective of, you know, controlling the narrative because the media put will put out a false narrative about the situation and have us looking and sounding crazy. So I, I unpack pack it from our perspective. So I tell our stories on our own terms and conditions from our perspective. So, you know, because if we don't tell our own stories, we'll have our uh, stories told for us. And that's what they've been doing, you know, pretty much since this country's inception is um, falsely telling our story. So if you're going to tell our story, tell it right. And that's what I'm doing here on the narrative podcast. I'm telling our story correctly. But before I dive into the content, I just want to, you know, unless you've been living under a rock, you know, a uh, rapper, uh, our brother, Coolio, he has just passed away recently. Um, so I want to send a narrative podcast condolences out to family, friends, associates, colleagues, anybody that knew him, worked with him, performed with him, um, you know. Condolences to you and, um, you know, it is unprecedented and um, unfortunate that he passed. Um, There's really no info on cause of death. I Google cause of death. Um, I didn't like how the article read. It said his manager said it appears his manager is the one that found him um, deceased. Um, appeared to have had a heart attack. So that don't, that doesn't sound too good. I don't like how that read, but um, anyway, there's no like real cause of death yet. They haven't done an autopsy, uh, but anyway, condolences to, you know, anyone that was fortunate enough to know Coolio, extremely talented artist, um, passionate about the craft, uh, I can remember, like, I, I, I don't know what award show it was, but, um, you know, in his acceptance speech, he got up to the podium and he was like, uh, I believe it was an MTV, like 94, 95 for um, uh, Gangster's Paradise. He kept on winning award after award. Um, he said he knew for a fact that he wasn't, you know, the best artist and he said, and it's his own words, basically, he didn't deserve the award, but he took it anyway. And, you know, I respectfully, God rest his soul, agree to disagree because Gangster Paradise was nothing short of arts. Because if you watch the movie, um, Dangerous Minds, it was about um, a lady living in a a teacher in Los Angeles. She was teaching her students about, you know, how to write poetry and, you know, his lyrics was just basically symbolic of that movie. Like I think um, the lady in there, uh, I believe her name is, uh, oh, I gotta Google it. Um, What's her name? Kidman or something like that. Michelle Pfeiffer, I believe. Let's see if it was Michelle Pfeiffer and Deja Smiles. Yeah, it was Michelle Pfeiffer and Dangerous Minds. Um, the film was in, in 1995 release. So yeah, I was like a youngin when that movie came out. I think I was in high school. So yeah. But like I said, the movie was pretty genius and his lyrics complemented the movie excellently, you know, because his uh, bars 
was just nothing short of poetry. Like it complimented the movie. That was what the movie was about. Michelle Pfeiffer was even in the uh, music video, which just put it over the top for that dramatic effect. Um, Coolio was in a lot of films. He lent his voice to a lot of animated projects, animated cartoons. Um, he did cooking. In his final days, he was like real big. He had like two or three cooking shows, um, cookbooks. So, you know, he wore many hats. He was a very talented brother and it's, you know, it's too bad that he's gone. But um, I feel fortunate that I got to experience him while he was here as an artist. I got to, uh, you know, listen to his music and um, watch him on film. So RIP Coolio. All right, um, diving into the content now. So after I'm done with these articles, I will give you a brief rundown to all my new listeners of my uh, format for a normal broadcast day. And then I'll jump into some commentary after that about some stuff going on. All right. All right, so my first article, the headline reads, at 15, Nehemiah Janelle was the youngest graduate, graduate to um, graduate Sam Houston State Texas University in Texas. Um, he received his associate of science at age 13 and his most recent is a bachelor's in health and science at age 15. Um, he's currently uh, studying his MCAT. Um, his dream is to become a cardiologist. So give a warm round of applause for Nehemiah. Okay, next article. One second. It says, um, this founder created maternal health platform so that black mothers will have a better chance at surviving a child, childbirth. And um, the uh, platform is called, uh, just a second. Do, do, do. I don't know. I thought I really wrote the name down in my notes. So it's called Walomi. The platform is called Walomi and um, the founder's name is Lay George. And she uh, basically created the platform um, based on her own childbirth experience, which was obviously a negative one. And uh, I say sidebar, um, sisters, uh, they get the short end of the stick um, in childbirth. Um, they have really bad experiences uh, delivering children at um hospitals like I've heard so many uh, horror stories from female uh, family members um, female friends and associates 
that have just, you know, had a terrible experience um, delivering a child. Uh, so, you know, basically, um, I'm going to just say it, they do not want us to procreate. They don't want us having um, healthy, strong babies. They don't want us to procreate, period. Because with more of us, that threatens their life or their life as they know it to be. But I digress. Um, on to the next article. The headline reads, Father and Son now the first black male owners of a wig extension line after acquiring the business from an Asian from Asian owners. Um, the website is on blackhair.com and the uh, father, his name is Dante Lay and his son DJ. Um, so that's basically, that's very innovative. Uh, and the um, intention that lines up is a very noble cause. Um, they just basically want our sisters out here looking beautiful and not getting mistreated when they go to these um, health, health and beauty places. Because I see so many horror stories on the Internet. You know, our sisters going back and forth with these uh, foreign shopkeepers, talking them to talking to them like a piece of feces putting they, um, some videos, I see them putting hands on them and, you know, just all kinds of stuff. So, you know, we need to, like, work on that communication. Like, nobody cares about you uh, opening a shop in our neighborhood. That's your absolute right as an American citizen. If you have the money and the resources, do it by any means. But do not come into our neighborhood and mistreat us. Because, you know, you don't want anyone coming into your neighborhood mistreating your women. So we got to I don't know. We're going to have to um, like work on, uh, you know, original people in the uh, Asian community uh, community to, you know, iron out some of these differences because it's getting ridiculous. You know that we got that cultural divide between us, but then we're fighting the same enemy. So. We're going to have to, like, try to get some type of understanding because, you know, that's unacceptable. We don't have anything against our uh, Asian brothers and sisters. You know, I mean, technically, if you really want to break it down about the DNA, the Asiatic original man. I can really break it down. I'm not going to. I can really go super deep with it. But, um, you know, we kind of we kind of just the same on the opposite sides of the same coin. But we got to work on that communication like y'all can't be coming up in our neighborhood talking crazy to our sisters, talking crazy to our youth when you get, you know, stores. But um, anyway, on to the next article. <clears throat> Headline reads, Beauticians make millions in virtual salons. Um, and the beauticians in question is Dr. Ty Codwell and his wife, Courtney. Uh, they invented a mobile app called SheShare, and basically, like that's a GPS. It locates really cheap um, rental sites, rental sites to you know start your own business for uh, licensed barbers and beauticians. So that's very nifty to have. It'll save you the trouble of you know going online and uh, driving, save you some gas money, trying to drive away, drive all over the neighborhood looking for the uh, perfect spot to open a uh, barber shop or a beauty shop. Get you a, a fair, affordable, decent price.
All right. And uh, my very last article. Um, bear with me. Because she this sister is um, from Johannesburg. So she's Zimbabwe by way of Johannesburg. Um, so I'm going to try my best to pronounce her name, but I'm going to uh, go ahead on and read the uh, headline for the article. Um, article headline reads, at 23 years old, she became the youngest person in Africa to earn a PhD. Uh, she broke through the glass ceiling with that uh, earning that degree from associate associate professor's degree at the University of Johannesburg. Um, and her name is, please bear with me, I'm going to try my best. I'm going to try my best. Like, it's, she's Zimbabwe by way of Joburg, but, okay. Musa, Musa Saki Dania Sarambe. I believe I did a good job, but um, you can follow the story. Just um, plug in the headline and it should pop right up. Um, so thank you for listening for that. that. Those are all the articles I have this week to share. Um, so just let me reiterate the reason why I'm sharing these articles is to provide positive frames of reference about our people and our culture. So you just heard um, everybody that I, um, all the articles that I read had, had were positive. You heard stories about our youth excelling scholastically. You heard about our brothers and sisters um, making strides um, with business, being entrepreneurs, creating a way, um, taking their destiny into their own hands and, um, you know, making that plunge to become their own employer and, um, you know, provide for themselves and uh, provide for their people, provide jobs for their people and um, do for the community that they're rooted in. So, yeah, we're going to give a uh, warm narrative podcast round of applause for all the articles that I read, all the um, people doing uh, amazing, positive things. So now I'm going to break down my uh, format for a uh, a normal broadcast day, which is every single weekend. Um, my random live feed, today's a random live feed. I don't know, never know what day I'm going to go live during the week. It's usually, it's usually just like one day a week, but um, I'll never know the days, the times or nothing. I just basically, when I see an article, I just, you know, I make a little note, something positive that catches my eye. I was like, wow, that's good. I just make a little, try a little note, and I try to accumulate them, try to do like um, anywhere from three to five articles. Um, now, my goal for the my lives, I want them to be super brief, super concise. Um, I don't want to rant, because um, if you're ranting, it's not technically a podcast. You're just, it's, it's a glorified rant. I don't want to like rant. I want my content to resonate. I want people to, you know, go out and apply it, apply my philosophy of sharing positive um, content because, you know, it just, it changes the atmosphere and it speaks volumes. So if we, you know, put positive things in the atmosphere, positive things will happen. I don't think that's the end all be all solution, but that's definitely a step in the right direction. Watching the content you post online, definitely our content creators, you know, whether you're doing skits, 
whether you're doing the podcast or not, try to inject something positive about our people and our culture and just, you know, watch and see all the positive things that have happened that will ensue from that. All right, so here's, I'm gonna give you a walkthrough um, about a full broadcast. Uh, mind you, I just uh, started this podcast like during the uh, pandemic, when we was locked down, couldn't go anywhere. I started this uh, podcast when I started it. I did not have a format. I was just talking and talking and talking. Um, I didn't have theme music. I sure didn't have a, a professional bumper. I have a professional bumper. I got theme music. I'm about to, you know, I'm checking out a sponsor type situation. So what I'm getting at is my uh, platform is growing. So my uh, loyal listeners, they've, they've heard the growth and they noticed, you know, when I added my um, sections, how, more, how much more that made my uh, podcast more fluid how the content just flowed and I'm not just, you know, talking in circles and ranting. It's just like I, I divvied it up into sections and each section I have speaking points for each section and it's, you know, not nice, neatly packaged for you and you can just, you know, unpack it and digest it, you know, at your leisure. It's nothing too overwhelming, nothing too over your head. Nothing too preachy, just, you know, giving you a positive uh, frame of reference about our people and our culture. So having said that, here's what you will be in store for this weekend. Should you uh, decide to, to join me and tune in to the narrative podcast? First, I start off by offering um, original people that own their own business the opportunity to receive free promotion from me. I tell them to hit me up at my uh, email address and then I give them, you know, the specifics, what I'm looking for. So, you know, I can put together a, a really nice uh, pro promo form. Um, I'm not going to give the information here on my live because I got over 100 episodes in. If you're interested in that, just go into one of my older episodes and you know, get the information on how to get free promotion from me. And the reason why I'm doing free promotion is, you know, my uh, my contribution to help keep the original dollar circulating in the original community by getting you, you know, some free promotion, get you some clientele, so you can do more with your business, do more for the community. You know. That's my, you know, method to my madness with that. And then um, on my next section is uh, I'm promoting a contest and I uh, call it the Chew on This Contest. And the reason why I'm calling it the Chew on This Contest is because um, the prize for anybody that participates in the contest will get a bulk supply of their favorite um, snack food item. So I'm going to give you a bulk supply of your favorite snack food item and um, just for participating in the contest topic. So the contest itself is called Chew On This and the topic, my current topic I have for the contest is, um, you know, share your most recent shopping while black experience. And the reason why I want you to share your most recent shopping while black experience um, is because it's something we need to keep the conversation going until we get our own communities, like how we used to be before we integrated, you know, because we have to venture outside our neighborhoods and um, patronize people. And then sometimes, unfortunately, these people that we patronize do not like us, don't want us in their stores follow us around, um, basically treat us like we're not human. I know, you know, our super militant brothers, they'll be like, well, that's what you get for uh, shopping where you that don't want you. And my answer to that is you can't tell out the rip 
who is like that just by looking. And you are going to have to go outside your neighborhood for something like you're just going to. Whether it's like, you know, something as trivial as a loaf of bread, um, something, a household item, maybe some trash can line or something. You're going to have to leave your house for something. Um, There just isn't a whole lot of original people own businesses, you know, within a five, ten mile radius from people's houses. Like, I'm not going to drive like all the way on another side of town just to do business for my brother. And it's a store just like right next door to me in walking distance. But having said that, I don't need to get treated like an animal to purchase whatever I need to purchase. So that's A, as I'm keeping the conversation going, keeping the uh, dialect law going, creating a space where people can talk about their uh, horrific experience. Um, And then B... It also serves as a way for me to interact with my listeners as a form of, um, you know, listener crowd participation. And so I get a hotline situation set up in um, some way I can like, uh, you know, directly speak to you. So if you enter the contest, I know you're listening to my content and, you know, you're reacting and responding being responsive to the content that I'm putting out there. So that's why I'm doing that contest. Then is my next section, which is really kind of the uh, first official start of my podcast. It's called the highlight section. In that section, where I'm doing is I'm highlighting uh, businesses owned and operated by original people. Um, qualifying factors, of course, you know, original people owning their own business, um, hiring their own, um, doing some type of philanthropy, either having their own nonprofit organization or paying into one, uh, sponsoring things in the community. Um, then also another thing is basically I look for, you know, to start from the bottom stories, like, you know, they didn't have the, um, you know, quote unquote means to start a business. They didn't have the knowledge to start the business. They just, you know, stepped out on faith and, you know, decided to just start their own business. Um, If they do have, you know, a college background or technical training, the technical and college background didn't perfectly align up with what they're doing, with what type of business they have. Um... So basically, I'm just showcasing in the highlight section, it is possible to start your own business. It is possible to do free for self if you want to do badly enough for self, like all those people that I highlight in the highlight section. Not saying it'll work for you like it worked for them, but, you know, just putting that narrative out that it can be done because the media, they bombard us with all this negativity and they have us brainwashed into believing that we'll never get off that hamster wheel. So I'm providing positive frames of reference for people that have done it. Um, And the last qualifying factor that lines up with my theme uh, and my current theme right now is the uh, season of fall. So like all the businesses I'll be highlighting is like something that you would just associate, you know, the season of fall with. Then on to my next section. My next section is the uh, spotlight section. And in that section, what I'm doing is spotlighting a prominent figure um, in the entertainment industry um, from all types of genres, not just um, one, not just hip hop genre, but like actors, actresses, um, recording artists, comedians, um, writers, uh, producers, um, public figures, just basically anybody impacting our cause, speaking on our cause, using their platform to be the voice and um you know, representing us in a positive light, 
um, bringing about change and um, bringing uh, solutions to the table. Those are the type of people. Those are the type of people that I spotlight in that section. I choose to like give them their roses in that section, basically for all the work that they've done, um, all the work that they do, and acknowledge them for everything they've done for the cause. I don't say the struggle, because I believe in the power of words on my platform. If you say struggle, you'll feel like you're struggling, but this, this condition that we're all in right now as original people, whether it's in America or abroad. Um, and then sidebar, something I keep on to my horn at until somebody can come and uh, disprove me wrong. I believe I started the way for spotlighting because before I added this spotlight to my um, podcast, spotlight section to my podcast, nobody online, nobody on YouTube, nowhere, nothing was even doing nothing remotely close to a spotlight section. But now everybody got a spotlight section all the time. So that lets me know that I'm making shockwaves with my um, podcasts. That, you know, I'm just, you know, resonating across the uh, internet, bringing people together, um, challenging people to think critically and challenging people to, you know, react in a positive way and do something proactive for the cause, such as like posting positive content. Um, So after the uh, spotlight section, I go into the health and wellness section and in the health and wellness section, my um, methodology behind that is, um, you know, original people were so much at the cause for uh, so many diseases because we literally got these mad scientists whipping up stuff that affects our unique genetic makeup that specifically targets and attacks our cells. Um, they're putting things in our food, our air, our water, um, our cosmetics, uh, cleaning products um, that adversely affect our genetic makeup in a negative way. And so me doing the health and wellness section is basically just promoting uh, total body wellness, um, basically just giving tips to how how to keep your mind and body and spirit fortified, uh, specifically your uh, immune system, Um, how to keep that fortified in these times we're living in, because like I said, you know, they're weaponizing this media to bombard you. And, you know, when you feel depressed, the first thing that happens is your immune system will weaken and, you know, one of these airborne pathogens will creep in when these man-made airborne pathogens at that will creep in and have you feeling really bad. But if you, you know, practice um, putting clean things in your mind, and your body, you know, you'll be less likely to become ill and fall victim to all the, this, this garbage that they're putting on us. So... That's what I'm doing in that section. Uh, what I typically typically do is like give the health benefits of uh, fruit, veggie, herb, extract, um, plants, elixir, give the health benefits of that, um, or like any type of physical exercise, you know, lifting weights, walking, whatever. Uh, you know, metaphysical stuff like mindful breathing, mindfulness, meditation, um, you know, just things that put you in a good mental space. And just like I said, just promoting, you know, total uh, health and body wellness in that section. I'm not a, a certified uh, herbalist or um healer or nothing like that. I'm just a person, regular person that has made positive changes in my own life. And I wanted to just put the um, knowledge out there. You know, if you get something out of it, great. 
If you don't, hey, chalk it up to uh, everything ain't for everybody. Um, next section. After that is my speaking point of the day. And my speaking point of the day is usually um, uh, current events, what's going on around the world, um, things going on uh, specifically in our community, things that have happened in our community or, you know, around the world. Like, how does that affect us? Where are we at in that? So that's what I unpack in my uh, speaking point of the day, where sometimes I don't have, you know, something planned. I just I just go randomly off the head and, you know, just think about something that we all do as a people that we need to work on. I might just speak a little bit on that. Self-included, self-included. Um, then after that, I go into my final thought of the day. My final thought of the day is just like a gem, a pearl of wisdom, something that will inspire critical thinking, something um, just basically to resonate with you. But like, hmm, I never thought about it like that. And then um, I close out by plugging whatever I got going on. It's usually just asking you to download this episode and all previously recorded episodes of the Near the Podcast so I can grow my platform to give you a better podcast experience. And then also plug my po- personal poetry blog, Hawes' Poetry Corner at www.mrhawsesblogs.com. And I'll instruct you, you know, on all that, like how to uh, support the, my podcast and how to support my poetry blog. And then boom. Do the outro. There you have it. The narrative podcast experience. Hope you join me this weekend. I'm going to have something good for you. All right. Oh, this thing keeps on brushing up against the sound effect. My bad, guys. Um, so I'm going to talk about it. My ran, my uh, some uh, things I want to talk about. Um, commentary. I was searching for the word. Sorry. <laughs> I just got to talking about I'm a little talked out now after I just broke down my format. But um, some things going on in the media. Well, first of all, just I want to say about the uh, I guess I got to bring it up again because, you know, there's been some new developments in the PNB rock situation. So first and foremost, I want to say I stick by my original point I made about that. My original point was that every time a rapper dies or gets shot or dies, it's not always, you know, the environment. You can't always blame it on Chicago. You can't always blame it on L.A. You can't always blame it on whatever city You know what I mean? Like if they're down south in Texas, you can't always blame it on the wards in Texas. Like you can't always blame it on um, the boroughs in New York. Sometimes when violence happens um, to rappers, you know, whether you want to believe it or not, you want to call me a conspiracy theorist or not. But these people are having these young men killed. And if you pay attention and watch, there's almost a formula, because it's usually when these guys get killed, they haven't been around in the industry for that long. They just recently got their deal. They're not maneuvering all over the city. It's usually a home invasion. It's usually somebody ran up on them in a, a public place just you know knowing exactly where they're going to be how much jewelry they they have on them how much money they have in their pocket and then it's film at 11 but we are so you know taught to hate ourselves we don't want to you know believe that's within the realm of possibility for that we always want to do the easy answer say oh it's street politics it's 
gangbang politics. It's, um, oh, they was hating on him because he was an entertainer and they was just jealous of him because, you know, they wanted his shine. And it's not that all the time. And I stand by that. It's not that all the time. Now, some new evidence has been uh, surfaced about that. And here's the thing you have to say, allegedly, because until they actually have a trial for this, until like actual proof um, comes of this, it's allegedly. And in the sidebar, when you say allegedly, that doesn't necessarily absolve you from getting a, a cease, and cease and desist letters or being sued for talking about something that you don't, you know, necessarily have, you know, the complete story about. Just just for the people that like saying allegedly, but, you know, it's until they actually like arrest them, like actually have the court date. It's, you know, it's up in the air because so far there isn't any uh, video footage of it. So far, there isn't any witnesses of it. They just said they got um, a young shooter. They can't say his name because he's a minor. 17 year old and they're saying that the father uh, was basically the getaway driver and so like I said it sounds fishy it sounds fishy it really sounds contrived to me the whole situation um so in the event that it actually was the young man that just ran up on him and just felt trigger happy feeling himself, it makes a little bit more sense because these days um, gangbangers, um, they're more like money. They're more um, money, like money mentality. They're like, OK, what do I get out of this? It's not just, you know, red flag, blue flag no more. It's green flag now. It's like, I, what am I blood? What am I getting out of this? Cut, what am I getting out of this? Before they, like, do some type of violent act. It's like, where the money at? And so, you know, running up on somebody, an uh, uh, entertainer with custom-made jewelry, where's the money in that? Because you got blood literally and figuratively. So how can you fence the jury? You got blood on it. It's custom made jury. Like if each piece is like 60 racks, the street value, that's going to depreciate even more. You probably only get like not even a thousand dollars for each chain because who's going to buy it? You know what I mean? They don't make sense. To just take somebody's life over some chains. But again, and it could be just like these, um, what I'm doing here on my platform, the narrative podcast, showing you, you know, the uh, long term effects of being exposed to negativism, to negativity, because now it's like, we're living in the clout chaser era. People do things for clout. People shoot and kill rappers for clout. They're like, okay, if I shoot and kill this, shoot and kill this person, worst case scenario, I go to jail. I'll be a legend in jail because, you know, everybody's going to know why I did it. I'm going to get a book deal. I'm going to get a, a reality television show. And if you pay attention, like they're letting inmates do TikToks and YouTubes and they're like monetized channels of cooking and all that stuff in the prison. Like they're making money in prison off this social media. So like worst case scenario, I go to jail. I'm a celebrity. I get money now because my life was crap on the outside anyway. Worst case scenario, they kill me. And if they kill me, I die a legend. That's the mentality that it being exposed to all that negativity. We 
we're being brainwashed to see ourselves the way they see us. So that's all I want to talk about, um, you know, the rock situation. Um, now, this next one is like I'm not bashing the brother, but I just want to um, just throw my little stank on it. I saw something come up in the uh, podcast and it's from somebody I really, really revere and respect. But, um, you know. I beg to differ with their opinion. Uh, So like recently, Jamie Foxx went on, um, I guess, Instagram and posted something along the lines of uh, podcasters are fake. Not everybody's a philosopher. I don't got the direct quote. Um, I'm just paraphrasing, but. You know, he's saying like everybody don't deserve a microphone and everybody that does a uh, podcasters aren't philosophers. Now, hard. So if you go in the uh, dictionary and look at, you know, the word philosophy, philosophy is just basically it's a belief. It's not right or wrong. It's just your way, your belief of life. And there's all kinds of genres of podcasting. People make podcasting, um, you know, how to's, how to fix stuff. People do podcasts about uh, fashion, about clothes and fashion. People do podcasting about, um, you know, entertainment, what's going on in the, in the entertainment industry. But um, longer story short, podcasting is an art form. And all artists are philosophers. So, you know, that's the part where, you know, I beg to differ with my brother on that one saying podcasters are fake because like here's the thing um everybody has a different goal when they're podcasting podcasting is just like basically um micro content like you're producing content on a micro level you can do them from anywhere you can do it in your car you can do it from your house your apartment, outside, the public library, um, anywhere. But everybody's motives is different for podcasting. Some people are podcasting to try to get the big bag. You know, that's their goal in um, podcasting. They're trying to go for the big bag. They're trying to get the corporate sponsors and, you know, have, you know, get sponsorship and, have the yuckity mucks basically step in with the bag and then, you know, dictate to them what they can and cannot say on a platform they created for the bag. That's some people's goal. Other people don't have that goal. Some people, you know, start a podcast to speak truth to power, such as myself. My message, I want my people to post positive content and, you know, be the example that they want to see. Be the change that one, or um, excuse me, I miss said that. Be the change that they want to see. They want to see, you know, our children like live better, you know, be pillars in the community. You got to post 
you know, content appropriate things to make that happen. Um, some people post, uh, do pod. Some people do do podcasts just to be talking, but it, like it's a community. Podcasting is a community. Everybody has their own different reason why they're doing it, but every single last one person that does it is in their own right a philosopher because it's their theory that they're you know getting behind this microphone and saying. You know, some people speak about, you know, social justice on their podcast. Some people uh, speak about, um, you know, cooking. There's all kinds of content out there, but everybody that gets behind that mic got something to say, whether they got a million followers, a million listeners, if they got two or three people that tune into their podcast every day, you know, they're changing somebody's life they're impacting somebody's life and that's the whole allure behind podcasting so you're ch make you're changing somebody's life with your content by broadcasting your philosophy i'd actually like to meet the brother one day he's quite talented funny comedian um great actor like, who don't like Jamie Foxx? But I just didn't, like, agree with the context that he um, posted. He said, oh, I don't like generalized statements, but, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinion. But, you know, the reason I didn't like it so much because there's a whole lot of original people that are podcasting right now. So, like, but with that statement, like you slapping a whole lot of um, I don't like saying the word on my platform because I already explained to you about the word black. But you just smacked a whole lot of black people in the face with that comment. But um, I digress. That's all I really want to touch on. Um, so I'm always just offering the uh opposing view on my podcast always you know trying to challenge my listeners to think critically assess things don't just take things at face value do your own due diligence study something um get involved be proactive share positive content Well, like I said, I wanted to keep my live super brief. So this has been a super brief live. Well, not a super brief one. I think I've been here for a little over an hour, which is more than I want to talk. I really tried to keep the 45 minutes today, but, you know, at least it ain't like two and three hours. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit over two hours. They got a counter. But, um, yeah, so I think it'll do uh, that'll do it for um this live edition of the narrative podcast. I'm gonna bring it to a close. Um, I would just ask anybody listening right now to please support my podcast, support my platform by um downloading the episodes of the narrative podcast wherever you get your podcast from, you know, visit and um download our previously this episode and our previously reported episodes of the narrative podcast hosted by me Halsey Allen there's a whole lot of um titles uh podcast titled the narrative but um download mine the narrative podcast hosted by me Halsey Allen um they also got the like button and you can share it back on platforms. But the thing that hope helps me the most with the algorithm is the download. So please download this episode and our previously recorded episodes of the narrative podcast to help me expand my, my platform so I can branch out and do more positive things. I got all kinds of projects I'm working on. Um, so trust and believe me, I'm for the people.
You know, I ain't here just for greed. I, if you listen to my podcast, I already done shared my philosophy on money. Money is a tool, so I need I need some big tools because I'm trying to build some big things. So that's all my motive behind it for. You know, money don't make you. You feel me? Like, I'm just using it to try to build something. Um, another way you can support me is support my poetry blog um, called Halsey's Poetry Corner, which I have one poem, brand new poem posted today. I just haven't shared it on any other platforms. It's on directly on my uh, personal poetry blog, uh, Halsey's Poetry Corner at www.mrhalseysblogs.com on blogger.com, powered by Adam. Um, The way you support that is basically just share that link on all your platforms, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you see my link, share it at TikTok, YouTube, whatever. Um, Yeah. And then just be on the lookout for... um, like all my projects, I'll, I'll announce them when I get to the finishing stages. But my ongoing one right now you can support is this podcast by downloading all episodes of the Narrative Podcast, all previously recorded episodes of the Narrative Podcast, anywhere you get your podcast from. And supporting Halsey's Poetry Corner at www.mrhalseysblogs.com. Um, also on my lives to live when I'm live uh, you can go subscribe to my YouTube channel it's just um, my viewer channel is Halsey Allen um, and um, subscribe to it uh, set your uh, notifications and then you won't miss me and then I also uh, when I'm live it also automatically uh, broadcast to my Twitter page as well and I'm Halsey Allen on Twitter as well. So like YouTube and Twitter, you will never miss me when I'm doing a, a live edition of the Narrative Podcast. You always, you know, be right in. And I think I even got a um, chat feature on this platform. So like when enough people is like viewing my live, I can like chat with you. So yeah. So YouTube or Twitter. Um, And that'll do it for this episode of the Near the Podcast. I uh, do regular full broadcast this every weekend. So join me this weekend for a full edition of the Near the Podcast. Um, Enjoy the rest of your week. I will see you this weekend. And peace, love. Um. Near the podcast and Halsey Allen signing off. I will see you all this weekend. Peace.